Hey guys, it's Taz101 Saga for the second video of the day. Not something I normally do, but being pretty busy these days, I need to make the most of the time that I've got. So, I've really been looking forward to reviewing this item, actually. This, as the title suggests, is the Russian Smirsh webbing. This one's not the Molly one, you can get a Molly version. Now, I got this from Grey Shop, which is in Moscow. Now, the guy who runs it, Sergei Makarov, as he's called on Facebook, um, he's a top fella. If you have any problems whatsoever with him, um, well, not him, but but anything coming from his site, not getting to you or whatever, um, you can hit him up on Facebook, and he's a great guy to deal with. He'll sort everything out for you, answer all your questions. So first off, big shout out to Grey Shop. I've got this set up, of course, for Airsoft. Um, I don't know how many guys sort of use it in the real world in in civilian terms. Uh, a lot of the Russian authorities and various military branches use this. They've got export ones, as I suggest, as I said earlier, in uh, Molly. So you can basically attach whatever onto everything. You got the, the Molly tabs. That canteen you see right there is actually a US canteen with Alice clips. So you can put stuff like that on it if you want. And the dump pouch um, on the right there does not actually come with it. There's a holster hiding under there as well. So you can stick a few other things on it that aren't, you know, by default supposed to be on there. So it does have a little bit of uh, modularity anyway. You can move stuff about, take stuff off, blah -de blah This comes in a few different versions, a few different colours. Uh, this is the olive drab. And this is, of course, the actual one. There are many clones out there. Uh, sort of cheap Chinese-based rubbish. Uh, but this is the proper one that's actually made by SSO or SPOSN. So it's the real thing. It's really good quality. Comes in many colours. Um, this one's set up for an AK either 47 or 74 pattern. The mag pouches will accept either and uh, I'll show you how they work in a minute because they have a, a pretty cool system where you can adapt them to uh, either magazine. You can also set it up for an RPK uh, where the mag pouches are of course longer to accommodate the 45 round magazines. You can have it set up with a mag pouch on each side there for the 100 round PKM box which holds 100 rounds of 762 by 54 for the PKM uh, general purpose machine gun that's been serviced pretty much everywhere. You can also have it set up for the SVD, the Dragonov, um, two smaller mag pouches per side for the 10 round magazine, again of the 7.62x54. So there's a few options out there and you don't have to buy another whole set every time you want to change the mag pouches for example. Because the way this ships to you, everything you see in front of you there, besides the stuff I mentioned that I added there, um, just the pouches and the butt pack there, it all comes disassembled in this butt pack. So you basically just get the butt pack, so it's a nice little compact size, and everything else is just folded up into it, so then you put it all together. This video will not cover how to put it all together, because it's not exactly a, uh, a fun thing to do when it comes to taking all this apart and putting it back together just to show you. that There's videos out there which will uh, show you how to do it on, right here on YouTube, so just look those up if you've just got it and you're not sure what you're doing. Um, it's not too hard. It's once you get it all adjusted and um, get it all fit right, it takes a bit of working about to get it to fit to you and everything you want to put on it. But once you get there, it's it's a good bit of kit. Um, I've used it a couple of times now, quite heavily. It's made of very, very good material. Um, it's going to last a long time, definitely. There's nothing thin and cheap and flimsy on it that's going to rip. It's all very, very solid material. Um, it's quite heavy as well when you've got it loaded up with stuff. But it distributes the weight very well because you have nice wide uh, shoulder straps. Pretty much based on the US Alice webbing from Vietnam. It, it seems to be anyway. It's very similar. You have like the uh, the H harness on the back, up there, and the butt pack. And obviously, instead of these sort of the old Alice traditional Alice clip uh, pouches, they've changed those a bit to fit the uh, the Russian system. But it's, it's laid out very good because you still have room for a backpack if you want one. And this butt pack here, you can attach another one of those up there. So you can actually have two on there if you want. And I'll show you how that's done when we get close up. Right, I don't have anybody in to actually film for me, so I'll do my best. Right, so we start from the left. Um, both sides you have your standard mag pouches. Now these, these are double pouches. There's an AKM mag there. Uh, gas airsoft, of course. Now when these come, they will have dividers in the middle so you have two slots. You can actually remove those because they are velcro. You have the velcro stripped down the side which you can see there. Just sort of wiggle them about, just give them a yank and they'll come out. The idea of that is, say if you're using AK-74 magazines which are polymer so they're a little bit uh, 
or Bakelite or whatever, they're a little bit narrower in dimension, um, airsoft ones especially. So to keep them, you know, a bit tighter in there so they're not too loose and banging around. Um, oops, focus. You can keep that divider in there. But if you're using AKM mags, they're pretty wide, you know. So if you want to fit two of them in there, you're better off just removing the. Uh, I don't know what pouch I've got two in. I should just take that one. You can fit those in a bit more easily, like that, if you take the divider out. And they sit in there pretty nicely. Just keep them kind of like that if you can, so it's easy to pull the front one out. They have a popper system um, and Velcro. So when you're sort of just patrolling or whatever, just keep that on there. You could do your pouches sort of ready to go, or you just sort of undo the popper and just leave them like that. So you can get quick access, or if you've used one magazine and that's in your dump pouch or you've chucked it or whatever, not that you would at Airsoft, but you know, if you've chucked it or whatever, you can just put that back down. Generally speaking, if you leave that flap in, the mag's not going to go anywhere because you actually have to deliberately sort of lift this to expose it anyway. As long as you do that, it's not going to fall out. Now there's two of these little smaller pockets on uh, each of these, you've got one there and uh, one on the front. These are quite small. They also have the popper and the Velcro system. I use these to carry uh, little things like uh, Allen keys and stuff like that. Or little bags of BBs and whatever. So they're there as well. Up on the left shoulder strap here, and I'll actually show you what is inside this because I can't do it with one hand. That is the medic pocket. You can attach this to the belt if you want, but as standard it will come attached um, to the straps like that. Well that's where it's supposed to go anyway. That you use for kind of your medical equipment, um, so say if you were injured in a real world situation. I personally use it to carry a little, uh, I don't actually remember what's in there, something or other, a tool kit or a cloth for my goggles or whatever, just anything that you kind of need handy. On the left here I've got, as I said, a US Alice canteen with the Alice clips. The Russian one is very similar to this basically, so it still kind of fits. I don't go for an exact kind of impression, but I try to keep it, you know, as close as I can without going too hyper realistic on accuracy. I only keep that for the German kit I do. But that attaches pretty easily to the belt. You have this nice big padded waist section, which means that you can just get the camera and that you can have sort of full support around your waist, so it's a lot more comfortable than just having a belt digging into you. The way that benefits you is uh, it's better for load bearing. As you also have these big wide straps, distributes the weight across your shoulders much better. Uh, this does not cut into you at all, not the waist or the shoulder straps. You can absolutely weigh this down to the point where you lift it at one hand thinking, God, that's freaking heavy. But then when you put it on, you don't actually feel it as much. The weight distribution of this is well designed. That pouch there does not come with the uh, the actual webbing, of course. That's something I added on additionally. But it's your typical little popper pouch, and you've got a little pouch there for the uh, water purification tablets if you should need them. Better just better just to empty these into a camelback if you have one, rather than drink from it, because loose water makes a lot of noise. You've got a nice little marking on the back there. I don't know what that says, but you've got uh, SSO there, which is the manufacturer. Now, the way this butt pack works, it's basically looped through uh, straps on the H up there. So these straps here are adjustable. Pretty much everything on here is adjustable. We've even got these uh, to tighten around. The idea is you put your magazines in. If they're too loose, you can tighten these up so it's all nice and tight fit and it's not wobbling about. Um, just undo these two clips. Lift this up. Get nice uh, markings in there. This is waterproof. So you can open that up, it has a drawstring. You have plenty of room in there to store whatever you want. There's a whole nice, uh, it's a bit like a Mary Poppins, you can actually fit a hell of a lot in there. Food, I use it to carry, you know, my gas and my primary and my secondary and whatever. I actually tend to stick that in there, like that, and just keep it keep it over. So you've got like, nice easy ready access. You can fit a lot in the back there, extra water, blah de blah. And when you're done, you just uh, do that back up. You can do it whilst you're wearing it, it's not terribly easy, but then stuff that goes in here are things that you don't sort of vitally need to access when you're in combat, so to speak. That there is a safari style holster for a 226. Once again, that does not come with the, uh, the Smirsh, but that's the only place you can really fit it, unless you go for a drop leg platform. 
I'm quite happy just to have it there because I don't really get on with drop legs too much. I've not had the best experience with them. Whatever, I'm quite happy to have it there. As long as you um, angle it right, I find it's pretty convenient to draw from there. I don't really have a problem with it. That'll fit a 226 quite easily. Don't have any problems grabbing it. It looks like it's sort of being crushed, but when you actually got it on and it's fitting around your body, there is a nice little spot for a holster there, so bear that in mind if you kind of... Because I did wonder this when I first looked at it. I thought, that's nice, but where do I put a holster? Because if you don't really like drop legs. But, no, you can fit one there. Especially if you have, like, a Safari Land for a, a Makarov, which is a much more compact gun than this. This is a double stack mag, of course, and it's a full-size handgun. But if you have a Makarov, it'll fit in there even nicer because the dimensions are smaller. So... If you're doing the actual Russian theme with a the Mac, you can put it in there. Then on the right you have your other two mag pouches, which are just the same. Got a speed loader and some uh, anti-fog spray in that one that I can't get to. On the front here, so this would be like on the front of my right thigh basically, that's where I put my dump pouch. Once again, not a terribly um, conventional place to put it, it's usually on your, uh, your hip somewhere, or your back, over your butt cheek, but uh, that works fine for me. I don't tend to sort of fill the whole thing up with empty mags before there's a lull and there's time to sort of reload and put them back in your pouches anyway, so it doesn't actually get too bulky. I actually quite like putting it there, it's pretty easy to stick them in. If you're after doing it exactly the real world way, then you're better off kind of putting that where the holster is or the canteen over to this side, swapping that to there and putting the pistol on a drop leg. You could do it that way. Up here you've got a nice carrying handle, you can carry the whole thing around if you want. And the nice thing about this is you have, uh, just like you have the medic pocket here, you have these straps which are Velcro. And those are actually there for a specific purpose. You can also use them if you set up with a camel. You can use that to secure the drinking tube. Your main buckle at the front is just a, you know, a large clip basically. And you have a smaller one there. Then between the actual, over your chest you have this one to keep it uh, tight. This thing's handy as well. Once you've actually adjusted it all, tape, tape the loose bits up, guys, otherwise you're just going to have them dangling everywhere, and that's just not handy. Um, I see a lot of people doing that in Airsoft. Uh, they just sort of adjust it, and they've got loose cord just hanging down. You know, the guys in the field use it all the time, the real guys, because it you know, just keeps things together. Simple to do, so... A little bit of effort creates a much less annoying setup. On the front as well, there's also little loops there for... Um, these are actually designed for flares. And go all the way down there but they can actually fit a pistol mag and that will hold it in pretty securely as well if it's like a double stack mag like for my sig 226 you can actually use that as a mag pouch it doesn't function too badly in that role right here we go another air fag as some people like to call us simple to put it on you grab your smirch and you're just going to fling it round you have your large buckle uh, your little buckle and then your chest buckle Nice thing about webbing like this is, even when you've got magazines in there, as long as it's not bulging like you've got four bricks, depending on how you know, much shooting you've been doing, you've got a nice compact platform where you can actually lay down, unlike a chess rig where you've got magazines kind of doubled up. Um, it's not quite as comfortable to go prone. Nice thing about this is you can even wear it over a plate carrier if you want. Um, there are a lot of armies in the real world, of course, that actually wear the plate carrier, but then they put the webbing over it. So they don't actually have so much on the chest, it's more just around the sides. And the benefit of that is when you go prone or you're crawling through a load of shit on the floor, um, you're not having too many pouches on your front that are being snagged or sort of digging into you because you're laying on them. I've had that problem with my old chest rig uh, because the material on that is quite thin. It's not very padded, so the corner of a magazine or something, you go prone, it just digs into your rib and stuff like that. So this is a medic pocket. Um, I fit sort of spare Allen keys and whatnot in there. It is actually designed for bandages and the like. You have another little compartment in there. J-cloth in there just for any goggles or whatever. But anything you want to fit, it'll stick in there. It just folds in on itself and it's Velcro. All the material on this is, at least if it's not waterproof, it's water resistant. So you got you got strategically placed drainage holes in the bottom of the pouches so they're not going to peel up, pretty standard stuff. Not for a dump pouch, but you know, a dump pouch is only a dump pouch. In terms of the holster I was on about, you are a little limited. Uh, 
you can sort of grab it quite quickly like that. I don't practice, but it's not too hard to do. It would be more convenient if it's on your side, but because of the way these have to be mounted, it doesn't really allow for that. That is the only drawback of this system, in my opinion, is that you can't really move the designated Smirsh items as in the pouches that come with it, or ones you buy in addition. You can't move them to exactly where you want. So if you want to, say, get rid of those pouches and put a holster there, you'd have to sort of refit these straps in a way that is not, you know, not supposed to be the way you do it. You probably could do it, but it's just not like a kind of real western kit where today it's very modular. You can just move it around like a jigsaw puzzle, basically. This is still just sort of transitioned slightly over from older times where things just were where they were. But it works well. Um, all the airsoft guns on the back to show. I have double checked they're all unloaded, so the cameraman's not going to get one in the eye. But it's not too hard to withdraw things if you want. Um, putting them back's not always ideal, but it is there with a bit of practice. So it's not a complete con having it back there. But that is pretty much the only place you can fit it. Uh, with a drop leg, you're kind of getting a bit close to these pouches, and you're probably going to bang into it on the way out. So it's not fully optimised for side arms. But if you're just looking for a basic kit for something like this, the big boy, that's what I use with it, that's the GHK AKM, you can throw that straight over, you just carry it around your neck or whatever, um, that's fine, you can do your mag changes and whatnot, not something I tend to practice either, but, and run it, whatever, um, works better with a rifle and stuff like that. Like I said, they do uh, they do PKM box magazines uh, pouches, and they do SVD. So if you're using any of the standard Russian uh, weapons and like machine guns or whatever, you can accommodate all of that without having to get a completely new uh, set. So it works with the AK pretty well. Butt pack like I mentioned. You can access it like that if you want, um, but you pretty much have to feel around for it. Anyone who uses a gas gun, or just wants easy access to gas, uh, one of these mag pouches will easily fit even a big large bottle of like root sniper like that. Um, that's one of the tallest gas bottles that exists for any gas brand, so you can pretty much stick that in there. You don't have to get a specialist uh, pouch and find somewhere to stick it. That'll go straight in a mag pouch if you like to do that, which I do. Right, we'll get rid of all this for a moment, and I'll go into the, uh, the actual additional pack you can mount. So, quick to unclip all that, click it straight down. Now, try and get this as best you can. Right, normally, uh, this is just an old British gas mask bag from God knows when. I don't have another Smirsh pack. Uh, but just say that this is another one of those. Um, it's got the same loop attachments. What these are here, these are some additional straps and clips that come with the Smirsh. And what these are designed to do is clip onto your front. So the way you do this, try and get this best as I can. The first thing you're going to undo is undo this uh, top strap on the medic pocket there. Then you have access to this here. Right. So grab, grab the left one and just clip it onto there. Like that. Grab the right one. Stick it under there. Now, these Velcro bits. This is where these come in handy. Like I said, you can use them for uh, the drinking tube on your Camelback if you're using one of those. Make sure you clip that. Uh, well, clip. Strap that back over. This can all be done very quickly, and these straps come as standard, so you don't have to uh, have to get them additionally. And then you basically have another pack on your back. Uh, those straps will keep this from sliding around. And another thing you can do with this, I haven't actually adjusted the straps on that to do what I'm about to show you. So it might go somewhat embarrassingly wrong, what I'm trying to demonstrate, but we will see. But what you can theoretically do, if you don't have a helmet on, you can undo these. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, there we go. And there you go. If you want, you can flip that over and access whatever you want. So any vital stuff like gas or extra BBs or 
blah -de blah whatever you're using it for. Anything you need to vitally access without having to take off the whole, uh, the whole webbing set, you can stick in there. And anything like food and supplies that you don't immediately need in a situation, you can stick at the back. So you've got a nice distinction there between what you vitally need and what you don't. You just spin it back round and then throw it straight back over your head, put the straps back up, and there you go. You don't even have to take off a backpack, nothing. And the nice thing about that is, say if you're actually kind of out in the bush or whatever, and you can just lay your weapon down and do it. If something actually interrupts you, the nice system about this is because it's still attached, you can be fiddling with this bag, but if shit suddenly kicks off and you've got to get the hell out of there, you can actually just run off like that. And you don't have to be dragging off a bag, so you can still use your weapon, you know, get it tangled up, but it's still there. That's, that's the good positive side of that. So that's, a, that's such a really nice feature, I really do like that. So that pretty much concludes the uh, review as far as the Smurf go. Really do recommend it. If you like something that's not just the standard old NATO, you know, Molly compatible bloody blah, even though you can get a Molly version, this really works for me. I might be wearing Flectarn, it's not, you know, exactly uh, the whole Russian theme or whatever. But um, you can use it pretty generically, whatever you want. I mean, you could even throw a leaf suit over this if you want. It's nice and sort of compact, and if these things don't have anything in, you can squash those really flat if you tighten these up if you want. So, I like it a lot. It's a really nice webbing set, and I've had good experience with it so far. So, that's been my review for this one. Um, any questions, feel free. I'm always here. Um, please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.